I guess it's just a matter of working out how much do we reward, um, inc- like, you know. Yeah. Which, I, I, that's an interesting thing, because that's also not specific just to Planetside. Like, that happens tons in Apex, that happens in even yeah. COD with how fast time to kills are. I think a big reason why... Apex does not have a fast time to kill. Apex, like, I, I don't play Apex, but a lot of my friends play Apex. Apex has a long, a relatively long time to kill sh- shooter, okay? And for the people that talk about, like, you know, people always give COD shit for, for having a super fast time to kill, but th- it's it's not that insane anymore. Th- there you have extreme outliers, but it's it's not necessarily... I think it's unfair to always go to COD games and be like, well, here's the damage model and it's absolutely crazy and you get melted. But in the grand scheme of things, I don't, I've played all the recent Call of Duty games and yeah, you get melted fast, but in general, I don't, I don't think it's as fast as it used to be. And I think, I think it was Black Ops 4, like you had 150 HP, but like, I think Call of Duty gets a bad rap. Because, like, you can be a good player in Call of Duty, and, and the, the difference between a good player, like, an actual good FPS player is someone that can play in multiple different time-to-kill scenarios. You know, like when I play, I, I'm good in fucking Call of Duty games. I'm good in Rainbow Six Siege. I'm good in Battlefield games. I'm good in Planetside. Like, there's, there's a wide spectrum of, of playing games and each individual game has its own method of gunplay or gunplay mechanics. And each individual game has its own time to kill. That being versed and being able to be good in all of those games, that gives you so much perspective in order to challenge people that literally don't fucking play anything else. And they like like he's talking about playing Apex here, but Apex in, in the grand scheme of things has a pretty long time to kill. So I don't understand why you're using Apex as some like short time to kill example that it, it doesn't make sense. And you're also, when you're talking time to kill two guys, you also have to take into consideration how many players are, are potentially in a battle. Right. And I'm not talking like all you're talking like, uh, like in a realistic combat situation in apex, you know, you have te- your, your fucking teams. You're generally not dealing with large numbers of players and I think having a longer time to kill in those situations, that's fine. Uh, but where you start to run into trouble is when you have your time to kill start getting faster with, with more and more and more and more and more and more players, right? And you might say, you know, well, doesn't that counteract your 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 argument of removing Nanoe from Planetside 2? Because Planetside 2 p- could potentially have all these players and you want to make the time to kill faster. I don't want to make the time to kill faster. I just want the time to kill to be the baseline of what the fucking game is designed to have. I think it works fine. It works perfectly fine for the game. You know, is it a little long for situations where you're fighting big blobs of people? Yeah, but that's why we have, that's why the headshot multiplier, that's why that headshot multiplier and being able to chain headshots gives you that fast time to kill that you need to cut through those guys and they can't do the same thing. The community talks about it in Planetside is just because Planetside, for some reason, is a lot of people's first FPS game or they think of it more as an MMO type game. That's true. And so and if you're not thinking of it as an FPS, you complain about that more. It's also the only game as well that doesn't. But what you have to remember here is those people that are talking about time to kills and all this shit, you can ignore whatever the fuck they have to say because they don't know what the fuck they're talking about. Like, offhand, if th- it's your first FPS game and you want to talk about time to kills, I we have nothing to discuss. You have no perspective. You don't know what you're talking about. Flat out. And that's okay to say to them. It just means they need to learn. It's out of all out of all those titles, it is also the only game that doesn't have any kind of matchmaking at all. It's it's very much yeah, a mixture. Yeah. It's it's very much a mixture of very different skill levels all at once. So you see this big discrepancy in you know how how we should be approaching these sorts of things. Yeah, but the difference there, I think, is that Planet Side Two. Ultimately, in Planetside 2, your skill doesn't mean all that much in terms of winning, right? Because someone who is completely horrible at the game can pull force multipliers. They can sit. You can have a, a, a massive Zerg of absolutely horrible players who will never, ever, ever be as good as you skill wise. But your skill doesn't matter because the skill gap is completely clamped down 
because of all the dog shit mechanics that Planetside 2 has. Like, the game is for shitters by shitters. Now, if you happen to be a good player in the game who farms people, congratulations, but your your enjoyment has to come from just farming people because you're eventually going to lose. Because that's just the game is tilted against you. As much as these dumbass content creators want to say, like, oh, the game's so hard for you and blah, blah, blah. Like, at the end of the day, it's always going to be more enjoyable for the casual shitty player to play Planetside than it is for the skilled player. Because the deck is stacked against the skilled player. And this might come as a surprise and blow you all away, but, I mean, that's probably because you have never been a good player and never will be. But once you are a good player and you understand the, the intricacies and the dynamics of the game, you will know that the deck is always stacked against you. You may shit on people individually 1v1, but this game is not a 1v1 game. Okay, this game is a 1vx game, and having super bloated time to kills in a 1vx game is kind of fucking annoying. And it definitely plays against you when you're fighting groups. How's it going, Miner? Um, I will say, like, this is this has sort of been something I've been toying with the idea with because I, I I go back to thinking about you know I I've been thinking about a lot lately as to you know are there any other FPS games out there that have the ability to add an inherent damage reduction in a competitive scene? I can't necessarily think of one that isn't communicated to the player who's shooting at that person immediately. Like the last game I remember there being a passive health reduction you could equip, sorry, not health reduction, health buff per se that you could equip was um, COD 4 with the Juggernaut perk. So in... in it, no, Nobody really does this anymore. Like they're like, Battle Royale is... I really don't give a fuck about Battle Royale because it's 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 a trash it's a trash game genre designed for low skilled casual shit players. Uh, I don't really care what Battle Royale is doing, but in terms of like the other popular like uh, franchises that are doing like your, your regular FPS games, I can't I can't think of one where you just get a flat twenty percent reduction to, to dam like to damage. Like no one's doing that anymore. We've we've kind of got away from that. It's, it, that's the only other game I could think about that really confused time to kills on a player-by-player -player basis. But at the same time, there was a pop-up on your screen that notified you as to when you were shooting at someone who was running that perk. Is that a potential fix for Nanoweave here to reduce that, that confusion level in game right now? It did used to have a little pop-up when you were shooting somebody with Nanoweave, but it, it, it... When? When? I, I I don't ever remember. I never, I know it exists for Flack. And I've been asking for that to be put on Nanoweave forever. What are you talking about, man? That I'm almost positive that, that, that this isn't a thing. I don't ever, ever remember seeing that. I have a lot of hours played. I don't play that much anymore. So if this is a recent event, I mean, I still watch streams of people play it. I watched two or three hours of a Planetside stream yesterday of a pure infantry guy. And I don't remember seeing that ever at all. So what the fuck are you talking about, man? It was removed. And, and spoiler alert, just telling, just telling someone that they have it doesn't change the fact of what it's doing. So no, just having a visual indicator doesn't fix the problem. Stop trying to get around fixing the problem with lame, half-assed excuses for fixes. Moved, as far as I know. It only pops up under certain situations now. I, d I don't remember that. Was that was that true? Flak Armor has that. Flak Armor has that? I don't know Flak Armor has it, but in, if you shoot somebody with nano under certain forehead. conditions, I'm fairly sure in the bottom left of your crosshair, it shows up a uh, little player icon with a plus icon. Okay, well, yeah, should we bring that back? To give players like, to help out. make one of the tool tips, you know, do we, you know, make one of the tool tips if you're shooting this person, they're tankier. Yeah, I mean, like going back, saying it's kind of like in Apex Legends as a game you've used as an example, uh, you've got like different stages of shields you can equip from like Epic to Legendary and stuff. And the icon when you're shooting the player changes color 
depending on which they have equipped. Okay, another thing too, like we keep referencing Apex Legends. We're not taking shit from a battle royale game that is designed to be a battle royale game and, and around that. It's not applicable to a battlefield style fucking game. It, it's it's apples and oranges, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, S stop doing this. I know that that your safe space game is Planetside, and it's the only actual FPS game that you can play. And then when you go outside of it, you have to play some some low skill, retarded fucking battle royale game. And, and, you know that that's supposed to suffice for your FPS experience. No, just just stop it. I think some sort of like notification to the player would be useful. Yeah, it's interesting the whole Apex Legends sort of, you know, the, the Apex Legends sort of comparison we brought up here because in Apex Legends, the, the the engagements get longer as the game goes on and the shields, you know, Evo up and stuff like that. And as people get tankier and weapons get upgraded, stuff like that. Um, whereas in Planet Side, you know, there's not really any of that consistency. You know, you can't expect when a tankier player is going to come around the corner and just simply have more health than you. Um, which, and, and like, you know, health pools in planet side too are not are not alien to being played around with i mean you've got like each there's 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 the max suit that's got a larger effective hp and some resistance values you've got the you know the infiltrator that's got less health by default you've got the heavy assault that has more effective hp with his shield so time to kill values in planet side too are already confused enough as it is does nano weave being a part of that conf like that i guess of course it does of course it does, because you don't even know if the person has it. Of course it does. You don't even need to ask the question. It obviously plays into the confusion about what, what the hell the health values are in the game. I, like, you can go to one guy, like, three guys in a row all have different health values. Like, what is this? There's confusion per se for a newer player. Is that really just a drop in the pond for, for all of the other you know, suit slots for all the other, you know, random time to kills in the game. As far as new players go, I'd say absolutely. Like, as a new player coming into Planet Side 2, I remember when I first joined Planet Side 2, I had no idea what Nano Eve was. I had no idea you could, you know, make yourself more tanky or anything. It's only from watching people on YouTube mm. uh, explain certain builds that I even figured that out. There's nothing in the game that helps you out at all. Lox again, anything to add? Yeah, I was actually thinking, what if we added that hit marker back in for the nano weave, and the hit marker is different colors because, if I recall correctly, nano weave has different tiers, and the colors would represent each tier. This guy is just an idiot. Like, it, no one care. No one is talking about level two, three, four, and five, man. No one fucking cares about rank two, three, four, and five of nano weave. That's not what we're here to discuss the discussion is about level one 20 percent reduction to small arms and that's that's the only thing that fucking matters okay i'm tired of this like the more and more i listen to this guy i just get pissed off like this is this is why what i talked about earlier you have to be specific about what you're talking about or you have morons like this guy who can't think, and he prefaces the whole argument by saying, well, I was thinking, well, do a little, just re just go lay down, okay? You need to think less. You might hurt yourself. Here. It doesn't really matter, though, the tiers anymore, because uh, it does Most people just max out, out on it. No, 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 because at level one, I'm pretty sure. Like, th this is a problem that you have to explain to this guy that level one is what we're talking about. And he, he thinks that he literally doesn't understand the mechanic. He doesn't, he doesn't even know what the hell we're talking about. That's a problem. Sure it does for all in future weapons, the same amount of damage reduction. Yeah, others. you're correct. It's no longer upgradable like damage reduction. It's just flat mm. 20%. And it only adds, I think it just adds new weapon categories to the yeah. reduction. And that, that is not a new change. That's been in the game for quite some time. But this is the problem when you give platforms to people who are completely and grossly misinformed. 
action uh, as you go. Yeah. 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 Like, I think like air to ground and stuff like that. I'm not sure. Yeah. In fact, because flak armor exists, and the person can either have flak armor or nano weave. They could occupy like the same position. Mm. I just like cut cut his mic. I don't want to hear this guy talk. For the rest, of just just shut up. No more. And yeah, I'm and the I... actual radical. I can hear the radical. What? So, like, moving on. The, the Actually, question... as long as it's just not annoying and clutters the screen, it's fine to put in. It would. Mm -hmm. it would... Yeah, let's put a radical in instead of just addressing the actual problem. Okay, now the shit player knows that the guy has nano weave, but he's still a shit player. How does it help him? It's a waste of time. Stop ignoring the actual problem. Address the actual problem. Would make some sense. Yeah, it would. It would definitely. I guess. Well, this sort of segues us nicely into the next point. Like, obviously, you know, if we were to keep nano weave as it was right now as a general suit slot in the game, then yeah, that that feedback would be helpful. But people have suggested that we just bake it into the core gameplay out of the gate. Does that, you know, do headshots become too rewarding at that point? Like, again, the question... Like, the question of making it passive, I've already talked about a, a ton. Uh, just go watch the other video. I'm not going to get back into it here. Uh, the cliff notes is that it does... Making it passive does nothing to address any of the problems, except maybe... Maybe the suit slot variety thing for, for role players with inventory. But that is such an insignificant problem compared to the other problems that it creates that it's, it's I'm throwing, it, no. No, it doesn't address the problem. Making it passive is the lazy, basic bitch, I don't understand what I'm talking about solution for people. That, that's what it is. The nice that I raise is, do we need to continue rewarding headshots more than a base two times, or do we bake Nano Eve into the game and make it affect all levels of, uh, you know, all levels of, um, I'm looking for the word here, like just, just the entire gameplay overall and buff the headshot multiplier on snipers to ensure that snipers can still one-shot headshot. I don't, I'm not sure Cammy understands what, what he's doing. I'm not sure I understand what he's suggesting. If he's suggesting... Okay, so when you're talking about making Nanoweave baseline, you're talking about making uh, every 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 person have 20% resistance to small arms. Okay, that's... We're, we're kind of already talking about that. So making... I don't understand how you would have to change... I, this... No, you're you're still not solving the problem, and just addressing it by the snipers making sure they get their one shot, headshot kills. That's how we got this problem in the first place. Stop catering to shit snipers, okay? This is how you you run into problems for everything else. But does that assume that symbiote would would be removed still? Because like Gan pointed out, if you if you bake in nano weave by default and then you run a symbiote build. You pretty much god at that point. Well, obviously it wouldn't stack. If these people like this is why I, I listen to these things and I just get annoyed with these people, man. If if you're baking in Nana Weave into in making it passive in a player, then what the fuck is the point of symbiote? Like you you kinda I know this is hard for people, but you kinda have to think like Oh, well, obviously, Symbiote, with its reduction, is going to stack on top of that. Obviously. You don't know that. Which is, yeah, and this is this is the big problem that comes with, you know, a lot of the things that we decide to do with NanoWeave at all. It, it affects a lot, like, it affects a lot of the elements of the game. I've got them listed up on the screen right now here as to what effects we're going to be looking at if we... You know, if we do decide to either, if we decide to remove Nano Weave, but if we also bake it in, it also has effects as well, as people have pointed out. So, for example, you know, if we remove Nano Weave, um, you know, as Gan, as Gan has already pointed out, a slower, more cover oriented approach to movement. This is, this is nonsense. The majority, the vast majority of players 
will not play any differently, and they will not notice any difference. Okay, D to 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 think like it's actually crazy. Like to think that wholesale the entire population of your game is going to play a slower, more cover-oriented approach to movement. What do you, based on what? On your theory that lower time to kill games, you, you're supposed to play more passively? That's what all of this is based on, and that whole theory is a bunch of shit at the front door. So this is, this is nonsense, as for the first one. Um... You know, gameplay will get slower. There is no... It, will it? I, like... I, I don't think you can make that assumption. Denying that people are going to be less aggressive because... Pe the people that are going to be less aggressive are your worst players who don't understand the interaction between a network game and playing an FPS game. Okay? Like, it, it boggles my mind. Like... And this this is what pisses me off is that this premise that this other this other guy brought up that this is how this is the optimum way to play in a faster pace uh, in, a, in a faster time to kill game it's totally moronic it's it's not true and you can demonstrate this by watch literally watch any competent good player play a fast time to kill shooter game you know what they don't do man. They don't play passive and sit like a little bitch and a pussy. They are aggressive as fuck. I, I don't understand where this is coming from. This is completely... It's like I said before. It's completely backwards. But, you know, what else could you expect from the Planetside community? I, I mean, it's, it's embarrassing. The higher-end players are going to have, for one, less effective HP to play with, but also um, headshots are going to be overall less rewarding. Again, to me, that's not a big problem. I think headshots, when a nano win. Yeah, headshots are going to be less rewarding. But the first point was you have less effective HP. Guess who also has less effective HP? And you get to do your real damage. Wow, I, you're telling me I'm not doing 114 damage on my 143 weapon anymore? I, I get to do my full damage to players? That might make me play a little bit more aggressively. Now that now that I don't have to play as passively as I did before, because I have to set up the perfect optimum situation to only play for headshots, now I can more aggressively play for body shots in more situations, which will let me play more aggressively. Wow, isn't that crazy, guys? It took 30 seconds to think about this situation from a, a real-world perspective. And we were already completely debunked this stupid idea. Nano Eve is equipped. Headshots do deal probably a little bit with too much damage, I think. And now I'm thinking, what if Flak Armor and Nano Eve basically had inverse? Like, Nano Eve would have the inverse of Flak Armor. Basically, like, basically less, they have more weak to explosions. And then Flak Armor is weaker. This guy, this guy so badly does not want to change Nano Weave. He just wants to add like these negative sides to it and just cut his mic off. The bullets. At that point, you still, I think at that. Why the fuck would you ever like this is this this shit is so stupid. You're saying that if I wear Flak Armor, I am now going to take more damage from bullets. Who the fuck would ever wear that? This is this that may be the dumbest thing I've ever heard of. At that point, we've sort of run into the issue no that Gam would run it then. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say, I think at that point you run into the issue where nano weave armor and flak armor in particular would make you incredibly because in planet side, you're likely to come across out of ground and infantry firefighting in the exact same fight. So you run a very, very big risk of uh This guy just the problem is the guy doesn't understand why nano weave is good and why it's in the state it's in. So he, he's talking about all these like extreme twilight zone modifications to it that, that it's just stop, just cut, get, get rid of them. I don't want to hear this guy. Uh, potentially killing a, like, you know, you, you run a risk of, you know, getting as, yeah, as Gam would say, no one would run it. People would just end up dying way too fast to some degree. Yeah, it would, it would add up to the more annoying inconsistencies as ground game is just said, I think, blocks her. Yeah, that was just an idea. Well, stop throwing out, like, 
The, the developers of this game have enough half-baked ideas, man. Like, we don't... Please, just uh, stop. You integrate it passively, I think... I'm not sure. I think it does. I think Nano Weave applies to Heavy Overshield. That would be the only thing i change, is have it not apply to a Heavy's Overshield. Yeah, um... That's, yeah. Does it apply to a Heavy's Overshield? Is that true? I'm not sure. I'd have to check. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it does. Yeah, so. it is. Yeah, Jesus. Yeah, that, that is something I would agree would have to change 100% if we were to go into that. Yeah, how about just making it passive and baking it in is stupid from the start? And, like, no. Um, I mean, in saying that, though, one, one thing that um, St. Celestine pointed out in his Reddit post is that we'd have a much more cover-oriented approach to gameplay and there would be a nerf to shuffling, um, which to me isn't such a bad thing. Um, like there are certain movement aspects in the game I think are a little bit crazy overall. Well, the, the, problem, the problem with shuffling in Planetside is that the game and the game engine it is so fucked by any latency whatsoever. And you have zero zero checks on player latency in terms of outputting damage. There's nothing. There's no region lock. And high latency is, is, is mixed with this engine is the perfect storm of dog shit. So it nerfs shuffling. It has nothing to do with shuffling. Especially when it comes to you know, when people can, when, when a new player takes some shot, shots at a player, such so, so as at, at a fairly skilled player, and they just start, you know, performing Gundam style in front of them and throw them completely off. Like that, that is, again, like how far does the skill gap need to go in that regard, you know? See, you know how you deal with those people, guys? It's really not complicated. So if you, if you fight it, this is how I used to deal with these fucking dumbasses. These two KD dumbasses who spam crouch 50 times per second in a gunfight. You know what you do? Like, I would get in the first gunfight with them and, you know, assume that they were a normal, a normal human being and not some degenerate, retarded creature with a, with a tick to press and slam his crouch button in order to, to gain some kind of advantage in the game. So, I mean, it would be 50-50. Sometimes I would kill him. Sometimes I wouldn't. But if I died to him, you know what I would do? I would say, okay, I know that this... this degenerate creature is at the fight so i let me just put a laser sight on my gun and then when i get in a fight with him i just don't ever ads him again and i just hip fire into his his dick or his belt line i don't even try to headshot him and he'll headshot himself because he can't help himself crouching 70 times per second so i'll just aim at his dick and like hold my mouse one on him and, and relatively close quarters, and he'll just kill himself because he's so stupid that he won't understand that that's what I'm doing because the only way he knows how to win a gunfight is, is, to, is to abuse the shit game's fucking network conditions or, or how, how bad the game has desync with what the player's actually doing. So, I mean, that's fine, and, and you know what you do to those people? You just hip fire them and kill them and shit on them, and you kill them over and over and over again, and they can't understand why they can't stop fucking crouching into your headshots because th that's all they know how to do. They, they never learned how to actually play the game, right? There's a little tip for you. I know Crouch is nerfed now, but there's still, there's still people that act like these type of creatures that still pretend like Crouch isn't changed in any way, shape, or form. But yeah, just put a laser on your gun and then just hit fire them in the belt and they'll kill themselves because they're too stupid to realize that's what you're doing. Like, real talk. Does the, like, I'm only throwing this out there as, as an idea because to me, shuffling, I do it all the time. It's in the game. You know, it's there to be abused. If you don't abuse it, you... Yeah, but you have 300 fucking ping, Cammy. Okay? You are the exact problem with, with, with shuffling and movement in the game. It's because players like you connect from the other side of the fucking earth to a server that you should never, ever be allowed to play on. And then you get to spew your latency feces and mix it with all the terrible desync and shit game engine problems that we have, 
And then people try to shoot at you, and it's fucking annoying as shit. Like, you're the prime example of the problem. Like, no one from Australia should be playing on a U.S. server. Yeah, I know you guys had Briggs, but you guys didn't want to play on Briggs, and nobody played, so that's, that's not my fucking problem. Now, you, you all migrated to Connery, which is a complete shit-infested server of latency and trash lag, and a, another shiny example of how badly the game needs a region lock. And now that Connery is functionally fucking dead, now you have these fucking Australians connecting to a goddamn data center in Northern Virginia. Does this make sense to anyone? Immediately going to be weaker, but, you know, do we, you know, does, 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 does Nano Weave inherently buff, buffing shuffling tenfold, you know, add a positive or a negative net to the game? I'm not suddenly thinking. Oh God, no. Basically, shooting while moving, so I decide. Just, That's just, shuffling, right? Just stop them. Not, not exactly. No. It's, yeah. Dan, you want to you you play the game? Like, who is this guy? Explain Ample. this. Yeah, shuffling is just a movement tech. It's pretty common and like, it's a little jank and plan aside, but it exists plenty in other games. I can set an example of things that guy wants to see. It's more a, um, yeah, it's more like a, an escape mechanism per se, um, uh, or, or a way to like, you know, reload while avoiding fire and stuff like that. Mm. What if they made OG Heavy Assault? I feel, I just feel like uh, OG Heavy like Late. Moving slightly slower. It's like you're doing too many things at once and you have to move slower to make sure you're doing things right. Oh my God. Just please, like, I, I asked for, just, just st go away. Stop. Stop talking. Uh, just give me a second. Oh, and as for the last note here, a possible shift back to the slower paced resist heavy. Resist heavy ain't coming back if nano weave gets removed, guys. Because resist shield is in a, is not good, it, it's not in a place. It didn't stack with nano weave anyway, so as all of a sudden resist is going to be good. Now this is this is all all this most of this dumb shit is based on that whoever wrote this, their their theory on on fast time to kill shooters are best played uh, apparently AFK or passive, which is completely the opposite. Uh, yeah, most of this is, is bullshit. And, like, slower-paced resist heavy. That, that's, that's why, I guess, someone would theorycraft this if you were basing it on the, the flawed premise of who, the author, whoever wrote this. Because this, this, I don't think Cammy wrote this part. He keeps bringing up some... I think the guy he's talking about is some dumbass recursion guy who posts on Reddit. But, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll just keep going. As they try to explain what the hell basic movement... Uh, is to this guy in the in the Discord call, who's apparently has knows nothing about the game. More beer, of course, of course, of course. Get that beer, guys. Quick vibe check in chat. How are we all Besides, doing? Besides, there's the fact that it's better to switch to your secondary than to reload your primary. Yeah, well, not when you're shuffling. Really, you can just what shuffle out of the way. And you're, well, I guess you, if you've got a commissioner guy, and running the, the you know the the standard meta, you're all good to go. But <sighs> yeah, you, like. Every time this guy op this other guy opens his mouth, like, uh, like the whole idea behind shuffling, you know, it is a high tier movement, you know, sort of strap the game. Um, who was it who doesn't know what shuffling is? Sorry, me. You can DM, DM it to me like a video or reference. Like uh, that. Mechanically, that would make it feel like they're hard. A, Real quick, watch it. It when it was more laggy, but uh, that gives you the idea at least of what it looks like. Do I have a lower bit direct to stream? Am I not okay. streaming? Do I not have encoding running right now? We're gonna now? real quickly watch that. Okay, nobody needs to Do know I not that have you're encoding running right now? If I don't, then I'll quickly. Encoding running right now? If I don't, then I'll quickly. I'm gonna restart my stream quickly, guys. I've got no encoding on Twitch, I've just realized. Yeah, no, you're good. Hmm. Um, cool. One sec, chat. I'm just gonna restart the stream and try and get that encoding options for y'all. Okay, so Cammy restarts the stream here. And then, uh, I th think it's this one. Doing anyway, Chief. Yeah, good, 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 good. Enjoying, enjoying getting this conversation out. I'm gonna do a video on it soon. Yeah, we go. Now we got encoding. 
Did something break on stream? Yeah, it always does. We're good now. We're good. Scuffed. Scuffed is and my I, little, scuffed is my nature, my friend. Um, I think it would be more Cardos if you've ever seen his stream occasionally. Yeah. Oh Jesus Christ! This guy's like watches Cardo streams. That's all I need. To How know. much yeah. RGB he has? Yeah. True. True. Um, okay, anyway, so, we're back. So, um, so obviously, yeah, like, someone just made a good point in chat. Who said that? It was, uh, yeah, Gan said gameplay on live stalls out really quickly. So, Gan, you were arguing that the highest skill players that can break the stall of a fight, you know, relying on Nano Weave and giving Nano Weave that buff allows them to do that. You think that's a, a prevalent reason to keep Nano Weave as a... The, the problem here is they'll they'll do it anyway. That like the f the fact that Nana Weave exists in the game is not the de facto reason why those players in that engagement break that stalemate. That's not why. It's not probably not even a big contributing factor because if you look at it, like I've explained before, the the good player in the situation is still going to be aiming for headshots and they but they have more option to shoot the body if they necessarily have to because there's some weird i think this is perpetrated by by these big content creators is they break down how a a skilled player plays is that they will only shoot you in the head and that's all they will ever aim for that that's literally it and they will take a death if they can't get a headshot uh that's a real dumb way to to look at at that type of player. A, an actually skilled player will look at a situation and take the absolute most optimum way to kill the person in the given conditions. Now, a lot of the time, yeah, that's right. That most optimum way to kill the guy is going to be, uh, yeah, I'm just going to quad dink him or five shot five headshot him, right? You know, but not every engagement, guys, is is seven meters away face to face with a guy. I, I hate to tell you, but uh, that's an over idealized version of what actually happens in the game. OK, uh, you can be skilled. Part of being skilled is being able to set up that situation consistently in time after time over and over again, uh, because you're able to position and put yourself in that position to do that but the reality of a game that has you know varying numbers of players in the fight and that the fight is changing fluidly throughout the thing throughout the entire course of it uh is that those situations you're not always able to create those situations even the best players in the game are not okay and sometimes yeah sometimes it makes more sense to shoot somebody in the body than it does to five shot headshot him in the head okay i know that this blows your mind because serious gaming has told you that there's salaried professional players who who only shoot you in the head from every range and every direction and every angle but that's not it's not the case all right it is yeah i mean so i would say nano weave gets a little iffy on heavy mm -hmm. um but you can't really like not have it on heavy, uh, because like not under not under the current meta, yeah. Like in class versus class, I feel like it feels very balanced. The only time I feel like it's slightly unbalanced is on a heavy, but it, I don't know. I think it helps uh, give players the outplay potential they need to like shake things up on live. So yeah. Out. Here's another issue I have, guys. Uh. You don't, you don't always necessarily get to have an outplay, and that's okay. Okay, repeat after me. Sometimes there's no outplay. Okay, that's that's just the way it is. All right. Uh, you you don't always need an out, and in Planet Side Two. I think people are so spoiled and so used to always having an out that they get this thing in their head like that if that if they play another game that doesn't give them that like if if they can't survive for 5 seconds while someone's shooting at them then they they give up on playing the game because what happens in planet side 
is when you constantly rely on always having that outplay, you, you know what starts to fucking suck? Your positioning. Your positioning becomes so fucking trash. Because, and it's, it's through no fault of your own. It's the game's fault and the way the game's set up. Through no fault of your own, you've grown accustomed to constantly, and maybe this probably happened over some years, is you've grown accustomed to playing in a manner where you can constantly put yourself in situations where in any other game you'd be dead, right? Because the, the damage models are better or, or you, you know, there's more skilled players playing it. Uh, so you, you, you condition yourself to play this game for so long that, like, when I play Planetside now, like, compared to other games, I shift W around. I don't give a fuck about my positioning because the players in the game are so terrible for so long that I know that because of the time to kill in the game and my ability to, to turn on people and shit on them, it doesn't... My positioning no longer matters. And I can play like the biggest dumbass possible and go unpunished for it. Okay? Now, if I take that same attitude and I go play a Battlefield game, you know what happens to me? Yeah, I may be moving along Shift W and killing some people there, but the first competent player that I run into fucking lights my shit on fire and I'm dead. Okay? That's the difference. And that's the difference that that going from a five a standard five bullet kill or four to five bullet kill game, that's the difference between that and having a game that has seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen bullets to kill. That these people are so conditioned to be able to to have no clue. Like when I watch some of most of the really good planet side streamers, uh, th or or th that used to stream, most of the really good players are excellent at positioning too. That's you know that's why they were so good. They were excellent at positioning, but there seemed to be a a new a new breed of players, and it's most often the two KD heavy guys that they can't position for shit. Or they mistake playing passive as positioning, which they are not the same thing, okay? Well, I'll just clue you into that. Playing passive and, and positioning in and of itself, they're not the same thing, okay? Uh, but for some reason, I think, you, you know, you might see these, these players actually improve if they learned positioning. But the problem with Planet Side 2 is that none of the good players are around anymore to punish people, you know, to have bad positioning. Because back when, back in the day when you were coming up and you were learning, you know, if you had shit positioning, then there were plenty, plenty of good players around at any given fight to punish you for it. Like, now, now you just do whatever the fuck you want. And the only thing generally you get punished by is, is some guy who has no clue what's going on, who's completely in Narnia, you know, he's not there to punish you because he knew to be there to punish you. It just, it's an accident, right? But I, I don't, don't confuse, um, don't confuse playing aggressive with like the, the pa baby pacifier that Planet Side 2 gives you to not learn how to position yourself, Okay. Don't don't confuse, don't conflate that and move that over into other games. Because that's not how that works. Okay. Up quickly. And usually it's like one to five percent of the players on the live server who are actually making the plays to change battle lines in an actual battle. Like if you look at the kill board in a base, it's always a few people getting majority kills. Yeah, not gonna not gonna deny that at all. Like, you know, in, in a core battle, you know, there is always gonna be that top one to five percent. But guess what guys? Removing Nano Weave here doesn't stop the good players from killing the shit players. I, I hate to tell you, but the situation that's laid out in terms of the good players breaking through the stalemate and getting a flank off or something, that's still gonna happen. It's not going to magically go away or get harder. It's going to be exactly the same. Because the shit players that can't headshot still can't leverage 
the difference between headshotting and their newly discovered base damage model, their gun that they get to have. Like you, you guys are so confused on this. It's it's really, it's really baffling. Who know how to you know abuse a flank and actually do something with it? Like you know most players, they'll they'll jump up to a to a light assault perch, they'll get one kill and immediately be domed by you know Joe Schmo on the ground because they found him. You know, like I, I totally know where you're coming from there. Um. I guess <sighs> the other thing is there's a lot of chip damage in the game while running from place to place and I like how it mitigates that. Yeah, no like, fair enough. There is contention. There is contention among other players who are more skilled or just as skilled as me on whether nano weave's good or bad. Yeah, I mean um Batty from Recursion, who was in the Commander Serious yeah. stream, he was an advocate for removing it. Um would have would have loved to have gotten him in here as well um but yeah in regards uh, yeah in regards to that side of things um you know chip damage is see the problem the problem is that, that there's there's no actual good players left and the people that generally don't want it to be removed or altered in any way i have finally found it because generally these people aren't very good at fps games in the first place so they have finally found a, a game that they can you know be quote unquote good in and any alteration of the core formula that's going on that they think will negatively affect them, they don't want it. Okay, they, they want to play the same game that the guys who were getting good in 2014 and 15 and in there, they want to play the same game. They don't want to feel like, you know, they're somehow disadvantaged in some way. When in reality, if you're actually a good player and you, you aren't just a, a safe a Planet Side 2 safe spacer, uh, you'll be good anyway, regardless so it, it really doesn't even matter to you. It's definitely a factor. And if we were to, you know, if we were to, you know, remove that nano weave buff, uh, chip damage, you know, would, would become a factor. So obviously the idea of incorporating it directly into the, uh, it, this is another like non, this is another like non sequitur, like bullshit point. Like you, you're saying that. Uh, yes, you will take 20% uh, less chip damage. Yeah, but when... Have you ever watched anybody play the game, man? Uh, you're going to take the chip damage and then wait and get the, the passive regen from, you know, if you have the fucking dumbass shit, the biolab or something. Or or you're going to just use a med kit. So it's it's really... It doesn't really... It doesn't really matter. And I can't believe we're still talking about making it passive or baking it in. Like... Like, no. Uh, you know, directly into the game uh, as, as a passive, we would, you know, we would see that. We, overall, the, I think if you, were to rem if you were to add Nanoweave as a core, impl uh, a core implant, a core um, debuff or buff into the game just out of the gate, um, you'd obviously have to, you know, completely redo a lot of weapon reviews and stuff like that around it. Um, so yeah, I guess how does, how does incorporating it directly into the game affect the knowledge base per se? Um, uh, I'm not sure. Most of the, uh, cause I don't know, it's been a long time since I've really been in the mindset of a Zergling. It's a very <laughs> different kind of like feel. I don't remember how much people actually learn from watching YouTube videos versus how much of it is handed down. Uh, I would say most of it is is handed down, and the shit that you can find on YouTube videos is usually just as as ignorant or bad as what you get handed down. So, in general, it's mostly all shit. So the the knowledge base of the new player and the average planet side player is is pretty in the dumpster. It's it's not good. Down from other players. I don't know what the higher end. Most of what you learn is just handed down from other players. Oh yeah, the higher end, no doubt, because well. Let's be real, at the higher end, you're often out, outpacing the, the, the skill of the YouTubers anyway. I'm willing to admit that. Yeah, I'm garbage. But yeah, I guess... On, on the... Because like, again, we, we still run into the core issue, I find, especially in the new player experience, um, where... Hey, Z Coops, congratulations on the new job, by the way, brother. Um, in regards to the... In, obviously in regards to the suit slot variety in the game 
you know, we do still run into that core problem that I find that a player, if they search into anything else besides Nanoweave, they're immediately punished. And that's something I hate in games. I hate seeing games immediately punish a player if they, uh, if they, if they make that wrong choice. Again, there are always going to be